Hello students, in this video I am going to talk about the new chapter the plant kingdom. The first part of our kingdom plant day or the plant kingdom. Let us go through the video. Okay. And the first one is a plant day. Plant day is a plant kingdom which contains all the plants on the earth. The plant day is a plant kingdom that which contains all plants on the earth. And these plants are they are multicellular and eukaryotic, photosynthetic and non-motile organisms. These plants are multicellular, they are multiple cell forms. Then eukaryotic, eukaryotic means true nuclear forms. And photosynthetic, photosynthetic means they can produce their own food. And they are usually, most of them are, are commonly non-motile organisms. That kingdom plant A, as we know that the name itself plant A, that means it's a plant kingdom, includes almost all the plants on the earth or on our planet. And they are multicellular, eukaryotic, photosynthetic and non-motile organisms. And few are heterotrophic. As in every case, you can be some exceptions will be there, right? In this case also, there is an exception. That is, few are heterotrophic. Heterotrophic means that depends on other for their food. That is insectivorous plant and the parasitic cascuta. That is few are heterotrophic. In the last chapter when we are discussing about the kingdom plant A, there also we discussed that is insectivorous plant. Which are the insectivorous plants? Sundew, bladderwort, nepenthes. These are the insectivorous plants. And the parasitic forms can be seen in the cascuta. These are the exceptional cases that is heterotrophic and parasitic. Not only the photosynthetic eukaryotic forms but also heterotrophic and parasitic forms can be seen in the case of plant A or the kingdom plant A. Then they have well defined and rigid cell wall made up of the cellulose. They have a well defined cell wall. There is a cell that contains a rigid cell wall and which gives the shape to the cell as well as this cell wall is made up of the cellulose and this plant contain a green pigment you know that plants are mostly in the almost every plants are in the green color why they have the green color the leaves are in the green color due to the presence of a green pigment we know that right we study in the smaller classes that is due to the presence of a green pigment called chlorophyll and the plants are green in color and because of this chlorophyll or the plants are in green color they hence they are autotrophic that is why they are autotrophic or they are photosynthetic. Autotrophic means they prepare their own food. And the fungi and the members of Munira and Protista having cell walls have now been excluded from the plant day. Initially or in the previous classification or the earlier classification they are included in the plant day. That is fungi as well as the some Munirans and the Protestants are also included because they are having the cell wall. The presence of cell wall based on the presence of cell wall they are also included in this group. But now they are excluded. When the classification progresses, they are excluded from this group. And so, as a result of this, and also when the classifications are updating, the cyanobacteria, the blue-green algae are not algae anymore. Okay, they are also not included in the algal forms now. That is, plant A is a plant kingdom which contains all the planets on the earth. They are the multicellular, eukaryotic, photosynthetic and non-motile organisms. And some of the exceptional cases that is a heterotrophic forms as well as the parasitic forms are the heterotrophic. In the heterotrophic we say the insectivorous plants like in Nepenthes, Sundew, Venus flytrap etc. And the parasitic forms like a cascuta. And they have a well defined cell wall and which is rigid and is made up of the cellulose. And they have a green pigment called as chlorophylls and because of the presence of this green pigment chlorophyll they are autotroph. And the fungi and the members of the monirans and the proteasins are now excluded from the kingdom plant day. And cyanobacteria are blue green algae are not algae anymore. They are actually coming under this plant day, kingdom plant day. And there are types of classification, various types of classifications actually we studied in the previous uh, the five kingdom classifications that we studied and the lineage classification also we studied, right. Then 
there is a various system are used to classify this plant. As the first one is an artificial system of classification and it is mainly done by the, it is done by not mainly, it is done by the Carlux Linnaeus and it is actually based on the few characters that is uh, on the some of the um, superficial or the morphological characters they actually like the color, shape as well as the structure of the leaves, their habitat based on some of the uh, uh, observable or some of few uh, morphological characters they actually classify these organisms. And they, in this classification or the artificial system of classification they give equal weighted to weighted as well as the sexual characteristics. Okay. That is in the artificial system of classification they give equal weightage to the vegetative and the sexual characteristic and it is not accepted. Why it is not accepted? This system of classification is not at all accepted because these vegetative characteristics are easily affected by the environment. When the environment changes, these vegetative characteristics changes. So even though they have the equal weightage to the sexual as well as the vegetative characteristic, because of this vegetative character there is a more chance for the changing or the modifications of these vegetative characters this system of classification is not accepted that is the first system of classification that is artificial system of classification that is done by the Carlos Linnaeus it is based on the few characteristics that is mainly based on the defined morphological characters or the outer few um, observable characteristics like uh, their habitat, their color, their texture, the shape, the size, then shape of the leaves based on these few few characteristics they have actually divided or classified. And they in this classification they also give the equal weightage to the vegetative as well as sexual characteristic but they are not accepted this system is not accepted the reason is that because the vegetative characteristics are more easily affected by the environment. Next is the natural system of classification in the natural system of classification this system of classification is mainly done by George Bentham and Joseph Dalton Hooker they, they actually uh, done this natural system of classification that is mainly based on the natural affinity among the organisms. This classification is based on the natural affinity of the organisms and they also included external and internal features. They are including the external and internal features and based on the natural affinity among the organisms. George Bentham and Joseph Dalton Hooker classified that is a natural system of classification was proposed. Next is the phylogenetic classification. In the phylogenetic classification that is based on the evolutionary relationship between the various organisms. They are actually evolutionary relationship. Their phylogenetic relationship is actually uh, used for classifying or they are studied between the various organisms and classified based on that. And organisms belong to the same taxa have common ancestors. They have the organisms that is belonging to the same taxa have the common ancestors. That is artificial system of classification by the Linnaeus. There the few characters are only classified and because but equal weighted to the vegetative as well as the sexual characteristic. But they are not accepted as the vegetative characters are easily affected by the environment. Next is a natural system of classification by the uh, George Bentham as well as the Joseph Dutton Hooker and mainly based on the natural affinity between the organisms as well as the internal and the external features. And the phylogenetic classification mainly based on the evolutionary relationship between the various organisms and the organisms that is belong to the same taxa have the same or the common ancestors. Next is the numeral, numerical taxonomy. In the numerical taxonomy this is also known as phenetics. And this numerical taxonomy usually carried by the use of a computer and based on this classification is actually based on all the observable characteristic whatever characters are observed based on all these characteristic organisms are the plants are classified and number and code assigned to all the characters and the data are then processed. We initially we said that it is carried out using the computer. So, the calculations of the data processing is very easy for this purpose so that they can multiple characters or the all the observable characters are used for the classification purposes and these all the characters are given the numbers and the codes are actually assigned to all these characters and the data are then processed using the system. 
and each character is given equal importance. Each and every character they are taken as a classification criteria or considered by for the classification and they have given the numbers and codes for all the characters and the data are processed. And this each characters are given the equal importance and at the same time hundreds of characters can be considered because they are carried out using the computer as a processed using the system right so the each character are given the equal importance as well as at the same time hundreds of the characters can be considered next is a cytotaxonomy in the case of cytotaxonomy that is the word itself is a cytological information that is a chromosomes number structures and the behavior of the uh, organisms is considered and are classified next is a chemotaxonomy in the case of chemotaxonomy that is based on the chemical constituent of the plant it is actually considered the chemical constituents of the plants. What are the chemical components that is present in the plant cells or the plant body? Based on this they have classified the plants. And coming to the plant kingdom, we are going to study that plant kingdom or the plant day or the kingdom plant day that include 5 major groups. Okay. There are 5 major groups in the plant kingdom or the kingdom plant A. First one is algae, second one is bryophytes, third one pteridophytes, gymnosperm and angiosperm. They the, these are the 5 major plant groups in the kingdom plant A or the plant kingdom or the simply plant A includes algae, bryophytes, pteridophytes, gymnosperm and angiosperm and various classification system we studied artificial, natural, phylogenetic, cytotaxonomy, cytotaxonomy chemotaxonomy etc. And the kingdom plant A that include the five major groups algae, bryophyte, pteridophyte, gymnosperm and angiosperm. And the classification of the kingdom plant A and the, there are some of the criteria they follow to classify the plants. Okay. There are the initially we studied about the some of the classification system that we or used for the classification. Here some of the criteria that we have followed to classify the plant kingdom or the plants. It's a, a plant kingdom is classified into subgroup based on the following criteria. Mainly there are three main criteria that we have that we are followed to classify the uh, plants into their subgroups. The first one is a plant body. As we all know that plant body is usually differentiated into what are the things? Root system and shoot system. And the root system includes the roots and shoot system includes what? Stem, leaves, flowers, fruits, seeds. Okay. These are the shoot system. And based on that, as a plant body is differentiated or not, there is a presence of this roots or shoots. Uh, Shoot system is there, root system is there based on the presence or absence of the well differentiated plant body. That is the one, that is plant body. Next is a vascular system. Vascular system for the exchange of things. That is a vascular system, presence of absence of the vascular system for the transportations of the water and other substances of the minerals to their one place to another or from the uh, um, place of absorption to the parts of the plant that is a very important vascular system right presence of the vascular system or not example for the vascular system is a phylum, xylem or phloem okay and the third point is a seed formation whether there is presence of flowers the flower producing or not these flowers are converting to seeds or not and the seeds are whether it is covered or not that is a naked seeds or close enclosed the seeds are produced based on the seed formation so these are the main three criteria followed to classify the plant kingdom in the subgroup. First one is a plant body that is whether the presence or absence of the differentiated plant body like a root system and the shoot system. That root system includes the roots and shoot system includes the stem, leaves and flowers, fruits, seeds etc. And the second one is a vascular system. Vascular system whether the presence of absence of the well defined the vascular system is there that is a for the transport of the uh, nutrients as well as the water or the substances through the plant cell. Example is the phloem and the xylem. 
and the seed formation whether there is a flowers are produced or whether simply flowers are produced or fruits and seeds are produced and the, these seeds are actually naked or enclosed within the fruits so based on this characteristics or based on this uh, features the plants are classified into the subgroups the plant kingdom is classified into two groups main initially or mainly they are grouped into two that is cryptogams and phenerogams cryptogams and phenerogams based on the seed formation into two groups that is cryptogams and phenerogams that is based on the seed formation the cryptogams they are the non flowering and non seed bearing plants they have no flowers as a result of that there is no seeds also the cryptogams they are the non flowering and non seed bearing plants it is further classified into talophytes bryophytes pteridophytes okay this cryptogams they are the non flowering non seed bearing plants and they are classified into talophytes pteridophyte bryophytes next is the phenerogams phenerogams seed bearing flowering okay that is flowering seed bearing and it is divided into gymnosperm this phenerogam is further divided into gymnosperm and angiosperm the gymnosperm they are the naked seed the seed are not enclosed and the angiosperm they are the flowering and having the fruits and inside the fruits there is a seeds a flowering and seed producing that is flowering and seed bearing plants that is a phenerogams and based on this characters it is divided into plant is divided into gymnosperm and angiosperm gymnosperms are the naked seeds and they are non flowering angiosperms they are the flowering and seed producing and angiosperms these are further divided into monocotyledon and dicotyledons that is angiosperms are further divided into monocotyledons and dicotyledons next is classification based on the vascular tissue present or not okay vascular tissue present or not that is non vascular and vascular non two that is non vascular group is there vascular group is there non vascular group includes talophyta and bryophyta okay bryophyta and talophyta are non vascular and vascular include pteridophyta gymnosperms and angiosperms the pteridophyta or pteridophytes and gymnosperms and angiosperms are the vascular group and non vascular because there is no differentiated plant body but and also not well defined the xylem or phloem that is non vascular vascular means they have a well defined vascular system is there and the five sub group according to the above mentioned criteria they are the talophyta bryophyta pteridophyta gymnosperms angiosperms that is plants are divided plant kingdom is divided into cryptogams and phenerogams cryptogams are divided into talophyta bryophyta pteridophyta and the phenerogams are divided into gymnosperms and angiosperms and this angiosperms are divided into monocots and dicots and in the i have next is a chart that showing the classification okay that is here in this you can it's clearly visible i have drawn the chart of the classification that the plant kingdom that is divided into cryptogams and phenerogams that cryptogams they are the non flowering plants and the plants without seeds they are actually cryptogams they are the plants without seeds they are they are non flowering plant okay and the phenerogams that is the plants with the seeds phenerogams are the plants with the seeds and the cryptogams are classified into talophytes talophyta bryophytes or bryophyta pteridophytes or pteridophyta okay that is talophytes or talophyta they are actually non vascular non vascular means there is no well defined vascular system there is no xylem phloem and the plant body is also not differentiated the first criteria is a plant body here in the talophyta they have their body or the their their absence of differentiated plant body that is non differentiated plant body and they have also no vascular system they are non vascular and the bryophyta they are also non vascular there is no well defined vascular system in the bryophyta and 
but they have differentiated plan body okay they have differentiated plan body this bryophyta they are without specialized vascular system because that is they are non vascular but their body or the plan body is differentiated into root stems and leaves okay and next is a pteridophyta this pteridophyta they have differentiated plan body their body is presents of differentiated plan body as well as they are the vasculars among the cryptogams they are the plants without seeds and non flowering plants that is pteridophyta is a vascular as well as a differentiated plan body and is pteridophyta okay thallophyta and bryophyta both are non vascular but a vascular is pteridophyta and thallophyta non differentiated bryophyta and pteridophyta they are the differentiated plan body okay and the pteridophyta is a differentiated as well as the vascular plan system they have okay and this thallophytes are actually so coming under the thallophytes are algae fungi bacteria lichens okay so these are the coming under thallophytes or thallophyta they are the algae is a picture of algae they don't have the differentiated plant body fungi yeast molds and bacteria and also lichens that is parmelia asnia these are the lichens next is a bryophyta coming under the bryophyta examples are the liverworts mosses this is a, here i have drawn a small picture of the mosses uh, you can see that a small stem like substance and the head part is there and it is attached to on surface right so liverworts and the mosses are the coming under the bryophyta and pteridophyta they have xylem and phloem that's a well vascular system is there differentiated vascular system asola salvinia equisetum lycopodium that is ferns ferns you can you know that for you have ever seen the ferns they have the leaves are there stems are there roots are there so ferns pteridophyta are the ferns asola salvinia equisetum lycopodium and algae is further divided into chlorophyceae phyophyceae rhodophyceae chlorophyceae phyophyceae rhodophyceae and the chlorophyceae that is chlamydomonas volvox eulothrix spirogyra etc and phyophyceae they are the laminaria sargassum ectocarpus and the rhodophyceae they are the porphyra gelidium etc and the chlorophyceae they are the green algae and phyophyceae they are the brown algae and rhodo that is a red algae okay that is green brown and red algae is are this one that's a chlorophyceae they are the green algae phyophyceae they are the brown algae rhodophyceae they are the red algae so that is a cryptogams part and coming under the phenerogams as a plants with seeds they are also based on the vascular system both have the vascular system and gymnosperms the phenerogams are classified based on the flowers and the seeds that is naked seeds or the enclosed seeds and the gymnosperms they are the non flower plants and the angiosperms they are the flowering plants and the seeds are naked in the case of gymnosperm that is a cycas or the pinus that is exposed ovules can be seen in the case of the seed you can see that in the pines there is a individual individual seeds are exposed outside they are not enclosed or not covered that is a naked seeds and the angiosperms they have the enclosed ovules are there that is inside the seed that is a mango pulp is there inside that there is a seed right so that is the seeds are enclosed and example of angiosperm is a mango they are the flowering right and these angiosperms are again divided into monocotyledons and dicotyledons they are simply called monocot plants or dicot plants and the monocot plants having the seeds with one cotyledon they have single cotyledons 
and the dicotyledons the plants having the seeds with the two cotyledons you can see the cotyledon means when you see the rice or wheat you can see that it's like a single cell right single individual they you cannot be split open but in the case of dicotyledon that means a, a gram or any peas mustard or the sunflower seeds if you split it if you take out what you can see it is having the two pores will be not the pores two cotyledons will be there two equal halves will be there that kidney in the case of peas you can see it's two kidney shaped right so that is called a cotyledon that is seed have with the two cotyledons are called a di means two mono means single cotyledons that are called mono cotyledon or mono coat like examples of the mono coat are wheat rice maize grasses etc and some of the tulips and daffodils they also are the mono coats and dicot examples are the gram pea mustard sunflower mango these are the dicot so this is about the classification of the plant kingdom that is kingdom plant is classified into cryptogams and phenerogams cryptogams they are the plants without seeds and non flowering phenerogams are the plants with the seeds and uh, cryptogams are classified into vascular and non vascular as well as a differentiated plant body and with non differentiated plant body and the first one is the thallophyta they are the non vascular as well as a non differentiated plant body bryophyta they have the differentiated plant body but they are non vascular they are without specialized vascular tissue and the pteridophyta they are the they have the differentiated plant body as well as the they are with vascular tissue xylem and phloem examples of the thallophyta coming under thallophyta are the algae fungi bacteria lichens and the bryophyta or the bryophytes are liverworts and the mosses pterophyta that is a ferns as well as salvinia equisetum lycopodium etc and this algae is further divided into chlorophyceae pheophyceae and rhodophyceae chlorophyceae are the uh, green algae and pheophyceae are the brown and rhodophyceae are the red algae uh, respectively and the examples of the chlorophyceae coming under the commonly the chlamydia monas wall box eulothrix pyrogera etc pheophyceae they are the laminaria sargassum ectorpus and the rhodophyceae or the red algae the porphyria gelidium gracilaria etc and the phenerogams are the plants with the seeds are classified they mainly there is a vascular tissue they both have the vascular tissue well developed vascular tissue and the characteristics that make them to classified the gymnosperm and angiosperms are the flowering as well as the seed whether they are naked or the, or the enclosed the seeds are present gymnosperm they are the non flowering plants as well as the naked seed angiosperms they are the flowering with the enclosed the seeds examples of the naked seed or the gymnosperms they are the conifers that are cycas pinus they have the exposed ovules are there and the angiosperms they have enclosed ovules examples as a mango and this angiosperms are again classified into monocot and dicot based on the presence of the uh, number of the cotyledons present that is monocotyledons or dicotyledons the name itself is a monocotyledons means mono means single cotyledons are there dicotyledons means di means two double cotyledons are there that is plant having seeds with one cotyledon example wheat rice maize grass etc tulip daffodils etc are coming under the monocot and the dicot that is a plants having the seeds with two cotyledons gram pea mustard and sunflower etc are coming under the dicot these are about the initial plant classification in the part 1 please children please go through this video and if you have any queries please let me know through the comments thank you